in keeping with our theme of this month, we're talking about amazing people who have made a conscious decision to leave this COVID thing better than they started. And Emily Barras is one of those people who has decided to create her dream in the time of a pandemic. And I am so just appreciative of what she's done. Emily, welcome to the show. Thank you, Lauren. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I'm thrilled to have you. And, you know, as an author, uh, I, you know, I really respect the whole notion of book writing and what it takes to go through the process. You are a former editor in chief at McGraw Hill. I don't think it gets much better than that. <laughs> <laughs> and you have 30 plus years in the publishing industry. And one of the things I know from conversations I've had with people over these last nine months, everybody has a story to tell. Everybody wants to tell their story, but, but usually doesn't know where to begin. So why don't we start there? Let's talk a little bit about why would you start a publishing house, especially for women's voices at this time? Good question. And, I, and I'll tell you honestly that, um, that more than one person has asked me that, why start a new business during a pandemic? Mm -hmm. um, and, and my answer is that, um, that I had worked in publishing for 32 years and I loved it. And I left publishing uh, and began a business called Bold in Business where I was working to empower women to teach them how to own their power in the business world. And I loved that work too, but I found that I really missed publishing. And um, when I started to think about starting my own press and started thinking about what would it look like, I... Uh, thought about this crazy world that we're living in right now and how much better the world would be if, if there was a balance of women's voices with men's voices. And, and I mean um, in politics, I mean in teaching, in books, magazines, blogs. Right now, there's still a, a majority of, of um, content out there is written by men and shared by men. And so I decided to merge the women's empowerment work with the publishing work and start Bold Story Press as a publishing house for women authors only to share women's stories. That's amazing. And how are you finding that entry into this new business at this time? And are the women showing up? You know, surprisingly, they are. And I have to say, I expected um, business to be slow starting, I started in August and you know, we were all in the middle of still trying to get used to what this pandemic means. And I was shocked at how quickly women responded to um, the word we were putting out and how many women out there have stories that they want to share. So we have been signing books at a faster rate than, than I anticipated and having a blast. Well, gee, isn't that just a problem <laughs> you are so grateful to have? <laughs> it is. <laughs> Yeah. So what are the what are the questions? I have so many questions. My first question is, is it is it still a situation? Is it still a thing where women are writing under male pseudonym? I don't think so. I hope not. And certainly I hope not for the same reasons that women did um, back during during the time of George Eliot and others. Um, at that time, a woman couldn't get published under a woman's name. And, and even if she could, the book would never sell under a woman's name. So, so women had to sign under male pseudonyms. And, and that, that's not true today. I'm not aware that any women sign um, are, are publishing under under a male pseudonym, but actually, now that I think of it, I think J.K. Rowling's pseudonym for her um, mysteries is a male name. So maybe yes. An interesting question to me, be only because you say that there are still so many more men publishing than women, and I just wonder if that's if that's still a thing. So I'm going to have to check that out. 
But now I want to talk about the women who are coming forward because I, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that um, everybody, I do believe everyone has a story to tell. I just also believe that not everyone recognizes the importance of their story or they've downplayed it or they say, oh, who wants to hear from me? Or, you know, why would I turn that into a book? That's just a story I tell my kids or, um, I, I don't know, like what, what's coming forward now from these women that they are opening up to actually telling their stories and being published? A lot of what we're seeing right now are, are memoirs and family histories, um, stories that, that uh, women want to share about generations of their family. Um, I also offer a course on how to publish your book. And in that class, I have two women in their 80s who are writing books for the first time. And one of those books we just signed, a children's book. So... I think for some women, it's the idea of legacy. You know, they want to leave um, something behind. And for, for other women, it is, this is a challenging and fulfilling um, task to be doing right now in the middle of this pandemic, to really dive into something new that challenges you and stretches you and also helps you achieve this goal during a time of such anxiety, I think is, is really helping women. And that's why they're, they're responding. I love that. I love that so much. I remember when I started writing my book, uh, it was a different book. I really started writing a book on etiquette that I thought would be a little four by six leave behind in the hotel rooms of the world. Right. Because I was traveling and I loved discovering the different cultural distinctions and all of that. Um, and ultimately, when I sat down to write the book, it was after a, um, a, a holiday dinner right about this time of year, a holiday dinner with two girlfriends in front of my fireplace with apparently a lot more wine than Greek food. <laughs> And when I woke up the next morning, there was a notepad on my keyboard with a table of contents of a conversation that apparently the three of us had. <laughs> what a great way to start. And what a great story. It started my year by writing this book that became Image Matters. And even in the process of writing, I started writing and then I got a big contract, so I put it away. And then 9-11 happened and my business blew up. I mean, my clients survived, thank goodness, my business blew up. Um, and I had time and I called back my editor and said, I got nothing but time and I'd like to do something good in the world. I'd like to get this book done. And in six weeks, we had it done. That's amazing. And six months later, it was published. It was really kind of a, a, a mini miracle in my world. But I remember that we were, we had a working title of maybe image shouldn't matter, dot, 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 but it does. And one night, just before we got to the final edits, I sat up at 3 a.m. and said, no, that's not the title. I have to take a stand. I have to be bold, to your point of Bold Story Press. Um, and I, I changed the title to Image Matters, the, the steps on the journey to your best self. And it made all the difference. And then all of a sudden having that book, even as a glorified calling card, it just felt like I had, I had accomplished something important at a time not dissimilar to now. We were in it, I was on 75th Street and Broadway. There wasn't much I could do at the time right after 9-11. It was, it was really very fitting to put something good into the world when we were struggling. Right, right. Good for you. And to do it in six weeks, that's truly amazing. Well, apparently it had been cooking for a while. That's how I tend to operate. Like things, things percolate for a long time. And then all yeah. of a sudden they just come bursting out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I really hope that for these women that you're working with, um, that they are going to be bold. And I know that with you as their guide, uh, that's definitely what I'm expecting to see. So how do you work with them? What's your process? Um, I think that, that most women who struggle with writing, and I 
include myself in this process. I wonder if you had the same experience, Lauren. At, at some point in the process, they deal with uh, some fear about putting their story out there and about um, what criticism or, or what negative response it may receive. And um, perfectionism is a, is, is a nasty thing and it can certainly get in the way of good writers um, sharing their work. And one of the things that, that we deal with is, is how to overcome that, how to, how to let go and let people read your material and give you feedback so that you can continue to get stronger in your writing. And if ever there was a time when, when I think all of us need to look inside and make a decision that we wanna live a brave life, I think this is it. I mean, now is the time to think about those things that you've been wanting to do and telling yourself you're gonna do someday for years and years and years and really make the decision to be bold and to be brave and to start. And, wow. and you can start with one paragraph, start with one paragraph a day, you know, break it down to the smallest step you can take and start there. And you're modeling that for everyone. I love that. And I know you and I have talked about how the notion of publishing has changed so much over the years. So share a little bit of that evolution and how you see it happening now. Well, certainly it's changed radically since I got into the business 32 years ago. Um, there are now four major publishers. There were five as of last month. Um, and there are 4,000 new books being published every day, wow. which is insane. That's just insane. And that's because of um, self-publishing and because of Amazon Kindle, where you can upload your book instantly to the ebook platform and, and call yourself an author. So everything about the industry has changed. 70% um, of books are being bought online now instead of in bookstores. Um, editors roles are changing in the industry. Agents roles are changing. And while it is still very difficult to get your manuscript into the hands of a traditional publisher, there are so many options available to you now if you wanna publish. Bold Story Press is a hybrid publisher. And so we publish books, um, good books. We don't, we don't publish all books that are sent to us as um, professional high quality books. Um, I have 32 years and all of the editors and designers I, I hire have many years of experience in the industry. And the, what's different between our model and a traditional publisher's model is that we ask you to share some of the risk in that you invest upfront in some of the costs. And then at the end of the process, when the book publishes, you take the lion's share of the royalties and we take the small percentage as opposed to the 15% you, you receive from a traditional publisher. So I think that that alone, just the whole change of technology and the ability to actually even do a one-off single book, like literally just print one copy for you to have for yourself to gift, whether it's a cookbook, a children's book, a family memoir. Isn't that crazy? Just make enough for Christmas, you know, make enough to give us gifts. Yeah, and the majority of books, I don't actually know the numbers for Amazon, but a huge number of books on Amazon are the moment you hit buy and send your money to Amazon, they print the book, they um, you know, slap the cover on and they ship it to you and you receive it within two days. And you would never know what's going on behind the scenes. No. So yes. yeah, the technology has really afforded a lot. So for any of our viewers who have ever thought, I would really love to write this down or, you know, or, or have been afraid of it or like, like I was just not clear what exactly was going to come. I say go for it. And Emily is definitely available for guidance and help. Emily, where can our viewers find you? Uh, the, my website is boldstorypress.com 
And you can find information there about how to reach me and how to submit manuscripts, et cetera. And we're on social media, also at Bold Story Press um, and all of the, the Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. Perfect. Thank you so much. I have a feeling that the new year is going to be a really great opportunity for so many women who want to tell their stories and are ready. And I agree, now is the time. Thank you for joining us, Emily. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you, Lauren. I really enjoyed it. Thanks. And we'll be right back. Oh, 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 oh,